Hey everybody, welcome back to the For Long All podcast. This is Blaine sitting alongside Brandon. And this is the Before the Long Haul. This is the five minutes pre-show. So skip to five minutes and we'll kick off the rain show. This is just a little pre-show banter kind of thing. Okay, so I, I meant to do this last time we recorded, bring this up, <laughs> but I couldn't because we ran out of time. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you ever heard about the whole, uh, did you hear about the whole uh, classified intel or US intel being leaked on Discord and all that? No, I did not. So it was classified detail into that showed that we were spying on some of our allies, which honestly, it's no surprise. Every country is spying on every other country. It's just that don't get caught. We won't acknowledge it. But if you get yeah. caught, we're going to have to acknowledge it. We got caught spying on Russia, no surprise there, and South Korea, one of our strongest allies. Oh, one of our wow. closest allies. And I think maybe Ukraine too. Maybe Ukraine. I can't remember who Ukraine was. But okay. also it revealed information that we that we got about Russia that we gave to Ukraine and all that, or that we supposedly gave to Ukraine, or we're gonna give to them about what Russia could be doing in the spring uh-huh. and in the summer. And it got leaked online on Discord. Wow. So the reason I want to bring this up is because of who leaked it. It was some guy that had top level clearance in the army. I think it was in the Air Force or the National Guard, one of the two, something like that. I think. Uh-huh. I know he was in Navy, I know he was in Marines, and I know he was in Army. So he was either Coast Guard or National Guard, one of those two. I can't okay. remember what he was. He leaked wow. it on a Discord server, a Minecraft Discord server, that he well, he was one of the oldest oldest members of the Discord server. And he was like 22, 20, 21 to 23, I think. Maybe 22. Okay. But within that time frame, he leaked that he didn't leak it to for any nefarious reasons. Any um, and you know, this is a, there's a lot more than what I just said that got leaked. Mm-hmm. That's just some of the big stuff that people were talking about. It, it wasn't for any nefarious reasons. It wasn't because he was a traitor. It wasn't because of any reasons like that. It's just because he apparently was banging about how oh, all you guys are like little like. Like, uh, like, not significant now that I have top level clearance. I'm a big shot and all that. Uh huh. And that's why he leaked it on the Discord server. So it was like, here, check this out. Blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. And he was one of the oldest. I think a lot of them were like, you know, around high school age and all that. And he was one of the oldest ones in that group. So he's not high school age. He's top level clearance. So, like, he's older. He's like 20. He was like a 21 to 23. Wow. Okay. Like, well, I don't want to say, like, two super high-level clearance, but he had enough clearance to where he was able to access that info somehow. Because he worked in IT, I think. Uh-huh. And he just did it and ruined his whole, li- whole life, basically, because he got caught. Yeah, he's because fired. He was bas- <laughs> he was basically, and probably going to be tried for treason. Ugh, Jesus. All, all because he wanted to show that he had clout. He wanted to show off. And well, I'm he, like... He got it. He showed it. I'm like, he- you blew... You worked in IT. You could have gone to the private sector and made boatloads of money afterwards. He should have already been making probably decent money then. Yeah, but it's the army. Nothing about to the private sector. Yeah, that's right. Well, damn, dude. Yeah, he ruined that because, like, what, are you going to be working IT for a company? That, he just wanted to show off to people he didn't really know and all that, too. And I'm like, wow, you blew a lot of stuff. And you're probably going to go to jail, uh, face hard sentences and all that. It sucks, man. That's so... It also- the same brand. Also, people are joking that we should not let that branch do anything online anymore because apparently, I think a month later, uh, a guy from that bra- from that same branch and all that got arrested for going to what he thought was a legit website that didn't require to go to the dark web that was titled hireahitman.com and was talking about how he's trying to find a place where he can use his military ex- expertise to kill people to make money. He didn't go to this website through the dark web or anything, just the regular internet and all that. He Apparently, it was a parody website that somebody made one day, and he thought it was a legit thing. And then he, what, he submitted getting... his resume? Yeah, yeah. No, he literally did. He literally did. And basically, I was about the CIA or FBI and all that, because he thought this was a legit thing. And then like they were like, okay, let's see if he actually thinks it's a legit thing. And he actually thought. And they're like, so okay. how did they find it, I wonder? Because it's a joke website. I I don't know because I can't remember that much. I'm about to run out of time. But basically, he thought it was real. It's not a real website. He literally was trying to get a hitman job. Boom. This is so dumb. 
This is so dumb. Same branch, dude. Same branch too. Within a month, I'm like, what all the? right. Their online access access has been revoked. Hey everybody, welcome back. back to the Four Long All Podcast. Of course, Blaine sitting alongside Brandon. And so today we're actually going to talk about uh, besides a little pre-show bit, what you were part of. Thanks for being there. If not, that's okay. And uh, but today, what we're going to talk about is like you're just now about to graduate high school, right? So now what? Yeah, yeah, about to go into the real world and all that. So I was thinking about this because I literally remember I was talking to my cousin about this a little bit ago because she's about to graduate and all that. And uh, so, like, what we think you should do, and also what we wish people told us to do after we graduated and all that. Mm -hmm. One thing is, if you're gonna go to college, get a job for the summer, get a Get some extra money for you whenever you go off to whatever town you're going to go, whatever city you're going to go to, to spend some money. Yeah. I also will take the other side of that coin and says if you're going to go to summer, I mean, if you're going to go to college, if you can, take that whole time. Go go somewhere. Like, literally for that whatever the month is or so. Yeah, spend, hang out with people because, honestly, you probably won't see a lot of the people you hang out with for a long time or ever again. Like, the summer we graduated, I hung out with a lot more people uh, that you don't, didn't typically hang out with outside of school a lot more. Yeah, you're like, oh, we all graduate. Let's all hang out. And then at that yeah. point, people start to branch off like a tree. And then some go this way, some go this way, some go this way. So, like, you're not going to really be seeing all these people like you do all the time for the last several years, especially for those of you that have maintained within the same school system the whole way. So now get in there, go have some fun, hang out with them because it's about to get a lot more difficult when this guy goes over here. This guy goes to college in Maine, like, oh, like all over once, the world. Oh, once they go off, you guys are never going to talk to each other again. Which yeah. kind of happened with me and some other people. It's like we kind of like stopped talking about probably maybe a semester or two in. Now that for just various reasons. Like nothing like ever really was malicious or like, oh, we just hate each other. Now it's just more like just stop talking. She went different ways. It's like yeah. I, probably see, I probably see them post something every now and then I like or like comment on it because I'm like, hey, you're doing good? Awesome. Congrats. Yeah. Yeah, I would de I would definitely consider if you have the ability to or have the money or whatnot, like just going and doing something maybe with a couple of buddies and go on like a trip or wherever that is, like to, you know, like we're in Texas, like, you know, go to Galveston or like go somewhere nicer uh, based on where, I was wherever it is. Go to you Oklahoma. Want to go. I mean, it really go doesn't to, matter. Go, go to Oklahoma the gamble. Experience. Go to, go to Oklahoma <laughs> gamble. Have a uh, the hangover night. Don't. I to me, I don't even. I mean, I definitely could go do that. Actually, but to me, I feel like that's not like a. That's still that's still a good opportunity. To do I referenced but... that movie, and yet I've actually never seen it from beginning to end. What is that? Is that Hangover? Yeah, the Hangover. Oh, that, that, that was it. Oklahoma. No, 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 no. Like, cause you know it. The only reason I said Oklahoma is because, you know, you can go gamble over there. And I think in the hangover, they go to Las Vegas and gamble. They just have a crazy drunk night that they have to try to figure out and rescue somebody in the end. I've seen the first one, the original. I haven't it. seen any of them. I, I just know they get drunk. They can't remember what happens. And they're trying to find a friend that that's missing now. Well, the first one was a good to. movie. I definitely think that's one of those top tier movies. Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen it, though. Another one is that I think you honestly agree with me. If you don't have a bank account, open a bank account, get a checking account, and get a savings account. And get a credit card. You're going to probably have to get a secure exactly. credit card. Discover was doing this. I don't know if they've kept doing this. Probably have because I think it probably is a good initiative for them. From my perspective, is that when I graduated high school, Discover sent me a letter that says, hey, congratulations, you're getting ready for college. You're going to need a credit card. And, uh, and they gave me a thing that says you'll be pre-approved, whatever. And it starts off super low. Like, I may have got like $300 intro balance for like two weeks. And they're like, oh, okay, this guy's not a nut or a month. And then boom, I went to $500 and up, 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 up as I've grown older. But if you get an opportunity like that, I would take that. You don't have to have that to be able to get a credit card. You can go to your different places, different banks, or if you have like Chase Bank, whatever. And you say, hey, can I, you know, maybe you can try to apply for a credit card. You don't have any credit I don't, you're probably not very good odds of being approved. You're probably going to have to get a secured card. That's what I was about to say. And, uh, and a secured credit card is literally like, it's secured because you say, here's $300. My limit's $300. So 
So in case I'm a bad borrower and spend all that money and then don't pay you back, you already have the money that I've spent. That's a secured credit card. And then a normal credit card is one where you have a balance you're able to play with. So let's say $10,000. You can spend up to that amount, but you have to pay it back. But it's not, your money's not in it already. So you're spending the money and then you pay that money back. Another thing you can do is figure out what's the best way for you to like make sure you don't blow all your money. And I'll, I'll get into this in a little bit. I was talking to my cousin and all that uh, that I recently just got. She's about to graduate. Uh, she recently just got her first job too as I think a host or waitress at Olive Garden and all that. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, we, and I was talking to her and we were talking about that and all that. Um, and she, she, she said she needs to open a bank account and all that. And also, I was like, you know, I, I mentioned this. I was like, yeah, and like, you know, you're gonna, it's like me personally, I think you're going to have to be careful when you get a bank account and all that because you could be like me where you swipe your card, you swipe your card, you don't realize that you that how much money is being taken away. So maybe you want to carry some cash, try to use that portion and all that before you actually swipe your card and all that because for me personally, I it's easy for me not to spend money and save money if I see it instead of just swiping. I know you're the complete opposite. You can actually not swipe and swipe, and you actually know about how much it is. Um, I mean, I would say for most people that is all the same, and and it would be the same for me too. Uh, I would spend less money, seeing it every time I made a purchase, deduct from a balance automatically. Uh, but I am just typically on average a saver, so I do just I don't I, I have. I don't have a budget that I follow. I have had budgets I followed in the past to get to certain goals, uh, but currently I'm not following a set budget. Set budget is don't spend more than I make, essentially. But I mean, that um, should always be a budget. That should always that should be the top, the highest budget you can have, because after that you're not good. And uh, but essentially, yeah, that's. I mean, I just I don't have a budget that I follow. I'm saving money every month. Uh, so I've spent more months, uh, some on more months, not as much on other months, and the average comes out to always just saving. And uh, so that's some people, it doesn't work easy for them. And when you're very first at the beginning starting, it's really easy. It's That's not how, it, this just doesn't work like that right off the bat. Unless you're a really like frugal person at heart, it's you're going to spend money more because you're not realizing how much you're spending right off the bat because it's going to your credit card and your bank account still looks good. So now you need, you need to build a very good habit at the beginning. Now I want to talk about something that I talked about with some of my old coworkers, because uh, a lot of my co- old coworkers, though, between the a lot of them were, will be some of the like about maybe a good quarter of them were like in the high school or hey, I'm 20 years old. Between like high school to 20 year old range, that was about maybe a good third of them. Mm-hmm. And I told I was talking to one of them that just graduated high school. I was like thinking about what to, she was like taking a year a year break and all that. I was trying to figure out what she wants to do and all that. And I was like, I said, hey, you and also you over there, you two listen to what I'm about to say. Look up, look at, uh, follow, and do the rule of 72. I don't know if you will, I don't know if you have one of those awesome teachers that told you about the rule of 72 in uh, our senior year, were you? I don't know. I don't think so. I heard about it, but I don't remember the details of it. Okay, so the rule of 72 is basically a really awesome way uses math using compound interest to basically get you to uh boat loads of money by the by your by the age of 72 oh okay uh hold on i'm, try- I'm i've probably to- seen that i'm trying to the- hold on so basically and it kind of tells you how much you have to put in and all that to uh for like you know uh hold on that's not it that's not what's the okay there it is there it is well, pretty much, it sounds like the exact same concept as you you look at a little bit more of that info. But like, for instance, and I learned more about this in college, not in high school. But for those of you graduating right now from high school, it would be a really great decision um, if you can open a Roth IRA. Course, I think it was a Roth IRA. Opinions, uh, but if you open, and this is. This sounds like the exact same concept of what Brandon's explaining, but I'm not sure about how much similar, but it's the exact same concept it sounds. That essentially right now, if you like open a Roth IRA, we're not going to talk about those details. We mentioned that a lot. Just you can check out some of our investing episodes. But open a Roth IRA. Your limit, I think, is now 6500 a month. I mean, um, a year max contribution. 
and uh, it goes up every year, every so many years, and uh, it goes up another chunk. So if you max out your Roth IRA every year, especially if you're like 20, for until you're going to retro- retire at like 60, 64, you're going to have like a million half. And that will be tax-free money because you paid tax on it when you put it in just as regular income without a break. So one of the easiest ways you can to become a millionaire, air quotes here, is that you literally only have to put in, you know, six grand a year. Just do in little chunks throughout the year from 20 to you're going to retire and you know, metaphorically speaking, you're going to have a million and a half. That's with average market returns around 7%. That is the average since the, you know, Great Depression and everything all in between. And uh, so if you do that, that's what you're going to get to like a million and a half. Now there is, we're not going to get to this kind of depth, but later on as you get towards retiring, you want to reconsider your where your assets and your, where your money is allocated and diversified into from more risky to less risky type things. That's stuff you want to consider based on how you're planning on retiring. If you're going to need that large sum of money, all your debts are paid off. It's not as big of a deal. All that stuff's going to be really important to make a decision about how that money is still in the market and around the market when you get older. Because, like for instance, if you wanted to retire in 2019, all your money was all your money was in stocks. Boom! Next thing you know, you just lost 45 percent of a million dollars. So now you're at 550 thousand. Well, like as an example, if all your money was in stocks, so that's but, just something to think about long term. Well, see, the reason. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, move that a little bit. No, but see, I was trying to find because uh, the the sheet that I, my teacher gave, I think it was actually one of my history teachers too. Uh, okay. The, the he gave us the sheet and all that, and it's and it gave us is like, hey, this is how much you're gonna need to to invest at the age of eighteen to get to like uh, at least a million, a million and a half or something like that. By the age of seventy-two, that's a very—it's a low number because it, like, my calculations are to like sixty-four. So at eighteen to the age of seventy-two, you don't even have to put in six grand a, a year. I can't remember. <coughs> how I know much it's it, less. Yeah, I was trying to find it. I couldn't find it and all that. So, and that's probably just a basic consideration of the average return on the stock market with the diversified. So average return, which is around seven percent, accounting for inflation. And so, and so that it should be probably just like that. And if that's the case, like it's less than six thousand a year, because it was like eighteen or twenty, eighteen age, twenty age, all the way up to like sixty four, was like investing a max IRA to sixty four and a half. That was you know six thousand five fifty five hundred a year. That's like a million million and a half. Now honestly- in that range. No matter what, even if you're not going to go to college, you're not going to go to trade school, you're not going to go to the military, you're just going to go straight into the workforce or whatever, literally do the uh, rule, of, rule of 72. Rule of 72, no matter what, no matter what you're know, going to do or don't know you're going to do, that's the number one thing everybody should do. Rule you of could 72. be a janitor and you'll retire with a million dollars. Yeah. Based on your lifestyle you want to have when you retire, that may or may not be enough money for you, but you could be a janitor and retire with over a million dollars. Yeah, like that's literally honestly, I say that should be the number one thing everybody should do when they graduate high school. Rule of seventy two. I know some of our like one of my one of my uh, one of my high school teachers talked to our class, spent like an entire class, or at least half of it, talking to us about the rule of seventy two. He literally passed out a paper and all that, and literally went in depth about it to all of us. That's great. And said, I'm gonna tell you guys what to do, but uh, this is what you guys should do. I think it was Mr. Hogg, and I had him for AP, your Yeah, history. you had AP, like history and stuff, so I wasn't in those classes with that guy. Yeah, he was also like a regular world history teacher too, but I had him for AP, European history, because I'm an old, and I decided to take, I actually ended up dropping one of the science classes, but ended up taking two science classes and two history classes. Mm-hmm. The chemistry, because the, the, I took AP chemistry, that had a, I think, a, a, a like 75% drop rate. Yeah, it sucks. Uh, regular chem- chemistry was terrible. Okay. I, ha- I had it, and I got kind of wishy-washy because I wasn't studying, and I lost it. Oh, my computer just went to sleep. Well, it turned off the display. We're back. Um, I got wishy-washy because I wasn't studying and stuff like I should, and I literally fell off the boat. Like, nobody saw me, and I had to cheat for the rest of the year. 
Um, to you, you should have told pass. me. I could have literally have helped you. Like, I literally wasn't paying attention for like the first half of the first six weeks. And then I was like, oh, I'm failing. Okay, I'll pay attention a little bit. And boom. Like, I was literally like past everything and I wasn't even really that trying that much in regular chemistry. Because all the concepts built on the previous concept. So I fell off the boat and I was like, dude, I can't swim. And, uh, and I was literally like, dude, this is so bad. Uh, the funniest thing about all of this is that we got to the end and they had their final, right? And she's, and they were like, you need to study. You're going to need to study. And she was serious. Dude, it was the hardest test like ever. Like the average grade for that test was like a 55, dude. I, and uh, she bumped us by like 40 points. And the funniest thing about this is like, I got like a 40 something. I got like the third best score in the class. And I have no idea how I freaking did so good on that test. I think, honestly, I was so close to uh, getting an A for the whole year in that class. I was just like, I was so close to getting an A for the whole year in that class. I was just like Oof. three points shy of getting an A for the entire year. If she didn't bump that like test, I think I would have failed that class. But also, you know why she bumped it? Everyone was going to fail because literally the average grade was a 55. So that means you have a few high people on there and a lot of low people and came to an average of 55. And that when that that test was such a high weight to it on the average for the grade. Like it was a big deal, dude. And so like literally there was like a there was a 40 point bump on that exam for everybody. Now, like, but okay, okay. Before we before we go on to the side tangent, let me finish. I want to say this. So okay. the reason I almost almost didn't drop that class, and I and the thing I did because that class was hard. The AP chemistry was because me, uh, a friend of mine, and another friend of ours, uh, the three of us were on this class together. And me and the other and the and the one chick, we were like, we don't want to leave you behind in this class. He was like, Brandon, you're struggling with this. Go, man. You're good. You you are number. Five or four in the class. You in the oh no wait, you're like number eleven in our class. You can get in the top ten. Don't jeopardize that by sticking in the class you are also struggling with. Go, both of you. I'll be fine by myself. Uh huh. And and we're like, you sure? It's like, yes, you two. Thanks for staying with me. I don't want you guys to screw yourself over because of me, especially you, Mrs. Number Eleven. Oh, I think either she was in the top ten or about to be in the top ten, one of the two. But I think she ended up being in the top ten. Belly. What was your number? Your number? You were high. I honestly don't know. I know I wasn't like. I know I wasn't like in the top ten. Uh, huh? Were you in the top ten? No, no. Hell no. I was saying if you were in the top ten, she's like, just go. Don't even worry about it. No, you I wasn't minus, in the top ten. Boom, she's top ten, and she just played you, bro. No, 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 no. It was the, the guy that stayed in it. He wasn't in the top ten. Oh, okay. But like, like, no, I, I can't remember what I was. I, I was like, because like for the first part of our high school year, I didn't take any. I, uh, like, kind of like you know, it's like, eh, just like get by and all that. Then I kind of started taking it a little more serious towards the end. Uh huh. So like you know, because of like me not taking it serious in the beginning, my GPA wasn't as high as it could have been. But that's besides yeah. the point. I'm also lazy too. I, I'm a hard worker, but also lazy at the same time. Well, we you know don't like school. They don't like school. That's just. Well, like you it, love other stuff and you it, work hard at the things that you like. In but general, like, what well, just in general, I'm a lazy, hardworking person. I can be like, I don't want to do this. Okay, I have to. I. Mm -hmm. But anyway, something else you guys should probably do before you graduate or after you graduate high school is don't move out. Don't move out. Oh yeah, I'll say should, this again. You don't move stay. out unless your parents kick you out for whatever reasons. Do not move out. Don't get your own place just because it'll be fun and all that. It may suck to live with your parents, but. You're going to save yourself money, headache, and a lot of stuff in the long run if you move out. You're going to save a lot of money if you stay, regardless how much it sucks and everything. Because you're like, oh, I'm going to move out. I'm going to be my own person. Yeah, you are at some point. But if you, the longer you can stay, the better. Because you are literally able to save so much money. And save yourself so much headache. I remember I used to work with somebody. They're like, oh, I'm going to move out now. And like, and like them and a friend moved out. I, I told them because I was like two or three years older than them. I was like, don't do it. You guys are going to hate hate this and all this. Because it's going to be a pain in the ass to like pay all this stuff. They're like, we'll be fine, but we'll be fine. I was like, we'll be you fine. Say so. But here's the thing. You're like, oh, I'll just pay rent. $1,800 a month. I can do that. You have rent. You're not going to pay just rent. You live with your parents right now. They feed you for free. You're going to have to now buy all your food. Including that stuff where you want to go eat Chick-fil-A and have Slotchkeys and have Starbucks. 
like whenever your parents are like, let's just have that and they pay for everything, you now have to pay for that. So you have to pay for your, your rent. You've got to pay for your food. You got to pay for the electricity that you're using that you don't pay for now and the water. And that's, you're going to have to start doing your own laundry. That takes time and it takes money. If, and most of us, you know, live with your parents, you don't normally do your own laundry. Normally, most parents are typically doing it for you. Not all of them, but that's, there's all this money stuff. You've got your vehicle. Your parents will probably help you fix your vehicle while you're at home. You move out. That's like your responsibility now. You got to start fixing your vehicle. You already have gas and everything. That's kind of, if you don't pay gas already, well, then there you go. There's another big expense that you aren't paying. Some people, their parents are paying for their cell phone. You're going to start paying for that too, presumably. Your Wi Fi, because internet is internet. It, basically a human necessity at, at this point. You're going to have to pay for Wi Fi at your place. You have to pay for your cell phone bill. You have to pay for your car insurance. And so some of those, like when you move out, it's like a cut and you pay for all of that stuff. Sometimes you get parents, so you move out. And you, you know, they'll pay your cell phone bill still, or they'll pay your insurance still. Like whenever I moved out, uh, I was already paying for quite a bit of my own bills, anyways. Um, obviously, not rent. They were feeding me water, electricity. They're doing all that. But uh, I was already paying for my car insurance. To have a nice phone, I had to buy my own nice phone because my I had a track phone for a long time. My mom said, "Well, you ever want like a nicer phone? You have to buy that." I'll I'm doing your track phone and stuff. I give you minutes for that. But like expensive phones, that's on you. And so and when I wanted the nice phone, I paid for my own phone. I paid for my own phone plan and everything like that. So just don't just think you're going to go pay your AT, just your rent. and You've got it. You've got substantially more money that you're paying for just than your rent. Now, I remember like a couple of weeks after that, I like uh, I was talking to them and it's like, so how's it going by yourself? And they're like, don't know about it. And I was like, what? I was I right? They're like, don't say it. I was like, Told you. Yeah, you can save thousands of dollars every month. At least two grand a month, probably, by not moving out. Now, only reason you have to move out is because your situation is terrible and all your parents kick you out. There you go. Now, what's another thing people should do, Blaine, before uh, they before they go off to college or whatever, after they graduate high school? We want to have opening bank account, getting credit card, roll of 72, don't move out. And I repeat mm-hmm. that again, don't move out. Yeah. Um, Maybe getting a job, which is spending time with uh, family and friends. It's spending time with family and friends. That's a really big one. And then I think job comes after that. Uh, it was opposite of what I did. I worked hard, 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 hard all the way through. And, uh, you know, and then I did start to take some time, which was nice. And, uh, and I ended up taking a hiatus later when I was pretty much in college or getting close to graduating, I think. Yeah, um, from like work essentially, and that was that was awesome because I've always just since I could work as like sixteen a month after had a job worked as much as I could while going to school and everything, and it was very busy and I missed out on just opportunities to have fun. And so if you have those opportunities, take them while you're young. You got the rest of your life to work, so you take that time. Like that's a double reiteration there because that's really important. You're gonna wish you did those things. You're not gonna wish that you made more money. When you're on your way out. So other things that you should do. Uh, one mi- middle note that you should make is that you don't have to have it all figured out. Because oh, no, 100%. You, like that's literally and that's like that sounds like a given. But like people like people in the 50s don't have it figured out. Like, the thing, I, I can't remember what I, uh, I, where I hold this from. But the key is nobody has to figure out. Your parents don't have it figured out. The guy next to you doesn't have it figured out. The guy that the, the us we don't have it figured out. No, I am probably having going through a quarter life crisis for the past year and a half now. Mm, no, <laughs> mentally at least I haven't been showing it, but I probably have been going through a little bit of a me- mental life crisis. Well, before maybe, you maybe. got your better job, more higher paying job, you were very low on the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, so. You were definitely feeling probably crisis energy because you were like, dude, this is enough money. I can't live at least the basic level like I want without thinking about it. So, but now that you're, you know, you're getting yourself more secured. Yeah. But yeah, no, literally nobody has to figure it out. I don't have to figure it out. No, Even that guy you see driving that Lamborghini down the road. And he didn't have to figure it out. He may be doing good, but you don't know what is on that plate of his. 
he may be able to drive that car, but there's people who make $200,000 a year and they have $198,000 of bills in that whole year. They live paycheck to paycheck while making 200 grand. Like, what? Don't be afraid to change your major after your first year of college and all that too, or first semester of college. Yeah, there you go. The first half of your college career, at least in business college, and I think it would be similar everywhere, other places, but pretty much like the first half of college, if you for your degree, is literally like basic courses that are like the same all the way around. And then you get your advanced, like more specific courses the other half. There's a few like entry ones that are still like specific to majors earlier on, but if you're in the same sector, they all apply. But yeah, after the first year, like your first year is just general crap that like everyone has to take all the same stuff. So right. after the first year, you can change majors and like it won't even hardly do anything to your trajectory. Like one of my favorite teachers in high school uh, told us uh, that what how he went to a big old like school and all that. Party didn't study that much, got kicked out, went back to his hometown, uh, just worked for a semester, went to community college to get his grade back, uh, but then went to a not so big or like, and then went to a different school that wasn't as big that didn't party, like, I mean, the cell party, but like, probably not as much as the, his original one, and switched majors and all that. Mm hmm. And now he was a teacher and all that, like teaching kids and all that, like uh, coaching too. He was one of my favorite teachers. Like everybody loved him. Like he had an amazing class and all that. I had literally yeah. I bumped into him a couple of times in town. And like we just spent like a good like 10, 20 minutes talking and all that. Mm -hmm. Also, yeah. don't be surprised that you will get really friendly with your teachers after you graduate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you, uh, you know, some teachers, they do a better job of connecting with students than others. And well, so like, you can definitely make some connections and friendships in there with some of your teachers. Especially because, like, once you graduate, like, you know, the whole, like, professionalism, they have to keep up and all that. Uh, like, they don't have to do it's that. Like, way. Whatever. Like, I've literally, like, 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 all the teachers, they say, hey, here's your Instagram. Here's your, here's my Facebook, Instagram, and all that. Follow me after high school if you want to and all that, blah, blah, blah. But just do it after high school and all that. Yep. Mm-hmm. There and, you go. Yeah, a lot of people end up doing that and all that. And you end up just seeing them and just talking to them and all that. Yeah, it's cool because you can like see them and if they if they're avid users of those platforms, you can see their life and updates and stuff like that. Yeah, like I literally went to one of our teachers. I uh, one of my uh, like after I graduated, one of, I heard the following year that one of them was retiring and doing doing a little graduation ceremony. So I went over there yeah. and to go for that. That's cool. Yeah, because there was one of the car directors that they were like. Uh, uh, retiring and all that, so I went over there, talked to them for a good little bit and all that. And now wow. the other one now lives in Florida. Oh yeah, he graduated, nice. went down to Florida and all that. He's doing good. Like I think he's like doing like some musicals over there too. That's cool. I like that. That's real neat. Let's see anything else that we can think of. Loan a skill or loan a loan a skill or niche or something that can make you some money on the side, like video editing, photo editing, maybe. Um, Oh god, what's the card? Bookkeeping, uh, maybe yes. um, photography a little bit more, because there's a lot of stuff you can do that that's your hobby that you can end up doing on the side. Maybe think about, hey, can I maybe maybe make this into a little side business for myself while I'm in high school or college and all that. Yeah, make a portfolio, especially if you're in something that requires a portfolio, even with like your small little fun stuff like your like photography. Your like maybe you just like to build code for like simple stuff. Do that and all that on the side. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Especially if you start out while well, you're early on just for fun and giggles or whatever. And you can they can develop into something you've never imagined. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could be the simplest thing. Like, oh, I just like the graffiti stuff. I take pictures or whatever. And the next thing you know, you're doing murals for people outside of their buildings. There's people who do that. That's their job out here in Austin. They're like, oh, we're looking for someone to paint like a beautiful mural on the outside of our building that's like you know austin energy keep austin weird like that's people are paid to do that mm -hmm. and that could be anything but yeah learn a skill slash hobby if you don't have a hobby pick up a hobby and see you could maybe make that hobby just into something that makes money on the side too just explore, just explore oh, the opportunity it, oh you couldn't oh you maybe doesn't have to make money maybe it's just like get to oh, it does contact with more people and all that against your connection with more people and all that it does not need to make you money you i think more than just saying see if you can make money with it 
is more for me is more scratch that find a hobby for you because like, like a, a youtuber i watch he says he's like i gotta try to keep at least one of my hobbies that doesn't turn into a business mm-hmm. he's turned his D D into because he plays D. he's turned that into into like a channel and all that well him his brother and two of the other crew like I mean, the brother is also part of the crew too. Like if his mm-hmm. YouTube team and all that, but they all record the D and D sessions. Because he, he started doing comic books on YouTube, like it, it was his passion that he started doing it to like that. Then D and D, then gaming, and now mm-hmm. Assassin's Creed law and all that, and video game law in general. Mm-hmm. And he's like, and he's talking about rock climbing and all that. He's like, no, he's like, I've thought about it, but no, I need to keep one thing for myself that's not becoming a business and it's like you know his spin the stuff like god climbing and all that because yeah what he, he says he tries tries to do is he's figured out how to uh keep a healthy keep a healthy fit lose some weight and still drink whiskey and any pizza yeah dude that's his goal <laughs> is it like be healthy be fit and drink whiskey and any pizza because he was originally told because he was honestly really active because he was he got out of the military and, and, and they told him it's like oh yeah the way your knees are or your like shins are whatever some body part of the leg you got five years before you some can't body walk part any- of the leg it's like you got about five years before you can't walk anymore because uh. of how he fucked up his legs in the military and all that but like they gave mm-hmm. him like okay you got about five years and he's like so he just started playing video games for a little bit it's like you know what i'm gonna fucking use all this before i can't anymore 10 years later he's still walking still fucking mountain biking and and uh, rock climbing Probably because he's using them and strengthening them. Yeah? Yeah, I think that wrap that whole last thing up into like a note is just find a hobby. Yeah. There's just people that are like, I don't know what to do. I'm bored. I'm sad. And it's like, do something. Like, something that you like. Like, literally, whatever it is that you can imagine that you like to do. Funny thing Find it and do it. It's going to bring you happiness. So, like, I guess you can say one of my hobbies is reading. And I actually just found out there's a Japanese word for people for that describes somebody that buys a bunch of books and that has a pile of them that hasn't that hasn't been read or touched yet. I'm like, Japan, don't try to insult me because that is me. Uh huh. <laughs> I have like about five to fifteen books I said need to read, mm-hmm. or like or finish. Yeah, five to fifteen books I still need to finish, give or take. Yeah, I need to. I have like two books. One of them I bought by accident, but I kept it. And then the other one I bought on purpose and have not opened it. One of them, um, I am literally probably about 20 chapters away from reading it, finishing it. But when I was originally going to finish it, uh, it fell apart. And I just recently bought the, a new a new copy of it, but just haven't finished it yet. Probably going to have mm-hmm. to reread all of it. It's The Lord of Opium, the sequel to The Lord of the, uh, uh, the House of the Scorpion. Oh, that's the second one? Yeah, Lord of Opium. Dude, that one is good. Dude, I've listened I was to like, the audio book. I was book. like 30 pages away from reading it. I, I guess I left it in the in my dad's dashboard and, and the sun whenever like we were in Mexico and all that. And then I grabbed to finish reading it. Psh, all the pages fell. I was like 30 pages away from being done? Yeah, give or take. That is a good book. I haven't I was like, the audio book. The narrator is very good. Like so, you just saw all the pages like fall in my as we were driving back to the states. You just saw all the pages fall off, and I was like, "Okay, I'm just gonna look outside the window for a little bit." Yeah, dude, you're gonna read it because <laughs> I was like, I was like, I was like, I don't know what page is what now. It's like I don't know what was that. I was like, so close to the end, and it just fell apart. Well, and I'm like, okay. If you needed something to do in the next twelve hours, you could put the book back together. No, I ended up buying a new copy because I don't know what happened to the other one. Well, at least at least you've I, you finished it, right? Or are you still about? A, uh, I gotta finish it because I'm like still thirty finished. pages away from finishing it. I actually did buy the double pack that had the House of the Scorpion and then the Lord of Opium. Oh, there you go. I still need to buy another copy of Catching Fire because I lost mine. Mm-hmm. And I have all the Hunger Games books. I just need to buy that one to like have all of them again. That's it. Yeah. Speaking of which, they just released a teaser for the prequel of of the Hunger Games. Hmm. Uh, no, not a teaser, a four trailer. Okay, because cool. like it was a book, it was a book they made, and then like they was like, okay, let's make this into a movie. The book was so good. That's neat. Anything else watch. you can? Anything else you can think of, Blaine? Um, 
I mean, those are the things that speak to me right off the bat. Like, uh, those are, I don't know, those are my major points for sure. Learn how to take care of yourself is the last <laughs> one I can think of. Like, learn how to cook, clean, and do proper self-care. And for the love of God, learn how to freaking cook something. It doesn't have to be exquisite. Just be able to make something on a heated plate, uh, you know, a pan yeah. on a stove, not in the microwave. Yeah, Please. Like- <laughs> and like anything else, and like one thing besides instant noodles, you guys, like one thing just besides instant noodles. Yes, instant noodles are delicious. And do we eat them from time to time ourselves? Yes. I did happen to eat them from time to time last night. Had one. I have uh, like, you know, 15 in the pantry. And I eat them maybe once every two weeks. Like, but something else, you got, you guys, like besides the peanut butter and jelly sandwich, too, you guys, come on. Something else. Something else that you have to heat up in the pan. Come At on. Least- Cooking a nice meal can impress a, your significant other or somebody you're trying to impress, too. That's Think about it too. like that. Especially because I know some guys are like, oh, nah, I'm not going to learn to cook. Do that to at least impress whoever you're trying to impress. It works. It definitely does something. Uh, if you don't need to know how, just look up a YouTube video. It'll yeah. tell you everything you need to know. And All right. What else? Well, you got some, You got a little extra? Just to learn how that? to take care of yourself and how to actually clean, too. It's helpful. And learn how to change the tire. Because I actually remember uh, a guy, <laughs> I, a guy I used to work with. He was like, "Brandon, I'm about to be shipped off to the to the arm to boot camp, and three days, I don't know how to change the tire." And all that. He was like having a little panic attack. I was like, "Dude, I'll, I actually need to change my tire right now. If you want, after work, I can teach you how to change the tire before." You Is this to after tire. you called me to come help you when you couldn't get your tire off? No, no. This is way after that. Like. It's like just a random night. The when I called you because I couldn't, it's because the bolts were stuck. Yeah, that was you way still could get them off. You had to take it down there. We tried. Yeah, like that was way after. Like, dude, like the guy at Discount Tower could barely take it, take it off. <laughs> oh, my and he was like, "Who the hell put them on?" I was like, "My dad." Because like, I, think, nut. I think my dad was like, "Hey, was like, hey, Brandon, let me use the car for a little. Let me see your keys for a little bit. Uh, I think it's time to change your brakes." Uh, uh, you need to go do this. Yeah, you know, take my take my truck and all that, and I'll do this for you. I was like, okay. He probably didn't whenever... do it by torque. He was just like, as hard as I can do it. Because I, I think the one you're thinking about, we were like 16, 17. When this happened, I was like 20, 20 Yeah, 21. we were young. Mm-hmm. So I was like 20, 21 and all that. And he was like 18, 19. The guy that was about to go to the military, I was like, let me show you how to change a tile. So I showed him how to change a tile, and he went off to the military knowing how to change a tile. Look at you. Because he was having a panic attack. I was like, let me, he's like, dude, I'll teach you. I mean, I'm Don't pretty worry. sure they'll teach you how to do that in the military anyways. I don't know. I think he was just having an existential crisis because he was, oh, shit, I was about, I'm about to go to the military. I just signed up four years of my life away and all that shit. I think he was just having an existential crisis. Yeah, probably. And I was like, I he's like dude, I'll teach way. you how to change this and all that. Relax. You'll be Gucci. There you go. Well, cool down. Well, I think we've reached the end of our segment today. Yep. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. If you guys want to check us out on Instagram. Check us out at For Long Haul Podcast. If you want to shoot us an email for sponsor information or anything else, email us at ftlhpodcast at gmail.com. Just like for the long haul, FTLH Podcast at gmail.com. Now we have a YouTube channel as well, of course. So if you guys want to watch us, you can versus just listening to us. That's you know at YouTube, obviously, for the long haul podcast. Thanks for hanging out with us. Hope to see you next week. And if you guys are graduating, congratulations and good luck in the your award. That's right. If you're watching, you would see air quotes. But good luck and uh, do the best you can because that's all you can do. You'll be all yeah. right. Bye.